Greetings from Manhattan. Uh, I'm here in quarantine and um, feeling very human along with all of you in this COVID-19 crisis. Um, I was pretty hesitant to put anything out there about this because I'm certainly not telling you I have the answers or know the right thing to do or say right now. Um, I'm in it too, and I certainly can't offer certainty, but um, I can try to offer a little comfort, try to normalize what we're all experiencing, and um, also what I've observed from the reactions from all of this. Um, so here in New York, we are, what, about two weeks into something that none of us has ever been through before. Um, our day-to-day -day lives are completely upended, and the reality of our situation has perhaps sunk in just enough for us to back up and say, well, what do I do now? Um, if you're in that place, or if you're still in the swirl and struggling to find your footing, this is for you, maybe for all of us. Um, so I'm hoping to give a little perspective and um, see if we can find some sense of a new normal together. So in response to all of this, I saw a couple really distinct reactions. Uh, there were some really brave and amazing folks who jumped right into the action of it all. And we've all seen it. Uh, there's a ton of amazing free content. There are new platforms out there to connect people with information and resources and support. Um, artists are using new technology to collaborate and make beautiful things for us to watch while we're stuck at home. And people are delivering food and making masks and stepping up to be on the front lines um, and just being of incredible service right now. Um, so that's one reaction, it's amazing. Um, and some people very understandably had emotional reactions um, to the shock of the uncertainty of job loss, um, of an uncertain time frame, which I think is hard for some people. Um, and the fear of getting sick and for ourselves and for our loved ones. And then some of us have kind of quietly retreated into a hole um, and we're watching and waiting for some kind of clear sign of what's all going down. All of these are valid responses. This is something that none of us has ever been through. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see ourselves cycling through any and all of these reactions. For instance, some of my friends who got right to work doing and creating are now tired. They're feeling fatigued and they're experiencing some of the more emotional and avoidant responses. For my part, um, I had an uncharacteristically avoidant response. I'm often a doer, but I kind of slowly backed into a corner myself and found a spot on the couch for a couple days. Um, and I was just hoping for some clarity and I stayed there for a while. And when the clarity didn't come, I had a lot of feelings about all of it. I ate some of them. <laughs> um, and I went from everything from like grief and worry uh, to confusion and everything in between, really. I felt a lot of, a lot of this in, in different ways. Um, we live in Manhattan, which is the current epicenter. Um, I am pregnant with twins. And I'm worried about how I'm going to get the care that I need during this time. Uh, I'm worried about my parents getting sick. My friend, a lot of my friends are completely out of work. Um, and I have other friends who have the virus and that is very scary. And it's all just a lot. And unless you have completely disengaged and unplugged from the news, it just keeps coming. <laughs> um, but you know, when I, after I had those two initial responses, I kind of climbed back on my own bandwagon and uh, started the habits that I know uh, serve me on a regular basis and ground me. Um, so part of what I wanted to talk about today is where do we go from here? Um, and first, it's the element of being where we are, which we just talked about. If you are motivated to do and create, awesome. And it's okay if you have the meltdown or the, if you crawl into the hole for a minute. And it's okay to rest. It's okay to let yourself be seen in your uncertainty. And it's especially okay right now to ask for help. Um, I think self-compassion is a must. And then as soon as you're feeling ready, 
um, get back to work in taking stock, recalibrate what's important to you now. And how is that the same or different than it was before? What are your current needs and desires during this unique and bizarre time? And then finally, we get to design what that new normal actually looks like. Uh, you start with what you know makes you feel your best, balancing self-care with purpose, connection, creativity, and all in the context of our new, somewhat smaller lifestyle. <laughs> um, and then hopefully you can find a way to organize your time and hold yourself accountable to what you know will serve you and do so please with a gentle, gentle discipline. And for those of us who are still feeling big things or hiding in a Netflix hole, all the amazing content will be there when you're ready for growth and creativity. And that will happen again. And so will the projects and the things that you want to do. And on the flip side, my friends who are in go mode right now, um, you might find that you crash and that you need to take some space at some point and that that's all perfectly okay. Please be gentle with yourselves. I've had to tell that to myself over and over and be flexible with your expectations. Um, try to allow yourself space to feel what you feel without comparing your pain to others. We are truly living in extraordinary times and self-compassion is the name of the game, especially the longer game. Uh, last thing, I created a PDF worksheet called Designing Your New Normal. And that's available for download at dreamfactory.com if you want a way to work through this process on your own. And as always, if you feel like you need some extra support, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, sending you all love and health to you and yours. And I'm here if you need me. We've got this.